Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Kristen Lindgren, and welcome back to the podcast. This week, we are discussing um, something old, something new, something borrowed, or something blue. I don't own anything but blue. I'm sorry. I'm wearing black again. It's neutral, you know. Methylene blue, the miracle molecule they don't want you to know about. I've written fairly extensively about methylene blue in the past. I've been using it in my functional medicine practice for years. I've used it in conventional medicine for decades, and it's been in use as a therapeutic in general for more than, well, a hundred years. Methylene blue is not new. It's old. We've been using methylene blue in medicine for years. I realize the age of your average Redditor is somewhere between bot and idiot, so I don't usually let completely inflammatory and ignorant comments get to me, but mm, we're entering the arena of you're not a horse, you're not a cow. Seriously, y'all, stop it with the hate posts on methylene blue. And so, like Patty, I feel compelled to respond. Methylene blue was the very first drug synthesized for use in humans way back in 1876. It was the first antibiotic. It was the first anti-malarial, the first antidepressant. Every emergency room in the country has methylene blue on the shelf to keep you from dying from cyanide or carbon monoxide poisoning. Is methylene blue a, quote, naturally occurring substance? Uh, no. Uh, it is not. Neither is aspirin or penicillin, after it's extracted, or most of modern medicine. Is methylene blue a dye? Uh, yes. So is rifampin. So is chloroquine. So is contrast dye. You've heard of red pills and blue pills. One wakes you up, the other keeps you asleep. You all remember this. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I understand. It's all very confusing, Neo. But for today's purposes, we're going to look at the science behind why the real red pill is, well, actually blue. Methylene blue, the blue pill, improves energy levels, supports mitochondrial function, boosts mood, kills cancer cells, and improves cognitive function, all without any of the side effects seen with their typical pharmaceutical counterparts. If you're interested in learning why methylene blue isn't just for cleaning aquariums and conspiracy theorists, then, well, grab your headphones and let's go. The origin story of methylene blue. Before methylene blue became the target of TikTok and Twitter hate, it was in fact a textile dye. Yes, the same brilliant blue that made Victorian dresses so, well, Victorian, also turned out to have some pretty, well, shocking medicinal properties. First used medically in the 1890s for malaria, methylene blue is now FDA approved to treat met hemoglobinemia, a rare condition where your blood can't carry oxygen properly. This is typically a medical emergency situation brought about by carbon monoxide poisoning or a cyanide-wielding serial killer. It's used off-label for urinary tract infections, in surgeries as a diagnostic aid, certain kinds of encephalopathy in cancer patients, photodynamic therapy, malaria, Methylene blue has an extensive clinical use history and is listed as one of the World Health Organization's list of essential medications. Not that we care about them, but just saying. But that's just the boring mainstream stuff. Functional medicine has long been in the know about the overwhelming health benefits of this, 
well, accidentally discovered blue salt. Think mitochondria, brain health, antimicrobial activity, and of course, the big C, cancer. How methylene blue works. Methylene blue is in an electron cycler. I go on and on about this in my post on the website, even including this lovely schematic I stole of how your cells make energy and something called the electron transport chain. Instead of this passing the baton down the line situation, methylene blue just takes it right to the end zone. In less technical terms, it helps your mitochondria work better. When your mitochondria are sluggish, which happens in fatigue syndromes, chronic infections, aging, and pretty much everyone post-2020, methylene blue steps in, like insert your favorite quarterback here, passing electron after electron into the end zone to keep ATP production in high gear. It improves cellular respiration and increases brain energy metabolism. It also crosses the blood-brain barrier, meaning it can actually get to your brain cells and help them fire more efficiently, even stop them from seizing. Ago, I'd retired from the military and then started having these seizures. So uh, then I, I found a neurologist, the, the drug that they gave me, the number one side effect was seizures of the, from this pharmaceutical company. So I, I kind of looked around, and I found this guy as a, a functional medicine guy, and he got me on uh, methylene blue to start off. And I know Mel Gibson was on here talking about it. Mm-hmm. And that instantly stopped everything. Methylene blue is both an antioxidant and a pro-oxidant. Don't let that confuse you. In healthy cells, it protects against oxidative stress. In cancer cells, it cranks up oxidative stress and pushes them towards apoptosis or programmed cell death. The cancer connection. This is the fun stuff. In 2018, a study by Sanchala et al. showed that methylene blue inhibits something called heat shock protein 70 or HSB 70. This is a protein cancer cells rely on to stay alive when under stress knock that out and they become more vulnerable to treatment or simply self-destruct. Even more dramatic, a 2017 study using methylene blue in breast cancer achieved a dramatic effect on cancer cell death by way of methylene blue mediated photodynamic therapy, which is similar to, but a little bit different from this photobiomodulation situation we talk about with low level or infrared light therapy. I digress. The treatment led to oxidative stress and collapse of antioxidant systems in cancer cells while sparing healthy breast cells. There are countless studies demonstrating the benefit of methylene blue for all sorts of cancer and dementia, and mood disorders, infections, septic shock, traumatic brain injury, Parkinson's disease, anti-aging, long COVID. So when people on Facebook or X say, well, there's no research on methylene blue, I kindly invite them to Google, TikTok haters, and social media myths. Let's debunk some of the loudest claims. Methylene blue is an alien spiral that appears in the night sky over Europe. Wait, what? How did that get here? I'm sorry. That was for something else. Methylene blue is a dye, not a medicine. Okay, fair. So is rifampin and fluorescein, and Botox is literally botulinum toxin. Next, methylene blue turns your pee blue. Well, yes, it does. Just like beets turn it red. Moving on. Methylene blue is synthetic. 
Yes, it is synthesized. So is basically every vitamin you take and all bioidentical hormones. We don't extract them from dead people. They are synthesized in a quality controlled lab. Methylene blue causes serotonin syndrome. Um, maybe in ridiculously high doses, if combined with SSRIs or MAOI inhibitors. At functional doses, it is well tolerated and beneficial. Context matters. There is no real science behind it. Again, please refer to the hundreds of peer reviewed articles clinical trials, and decades of safe use. Methylene blue turns your brain blue. Can we talk about this, please? If you're seeing this picture, you know you're looking at a hating on methylene blue post. Makes them easy to spot. When you see images of blue-stained brains, particularly in animal studies, it's because methylene blue was administered prior to death. Why? Because it temporarily accumulates in tissues, especially those with high mitochondrial activity, like the brain, heart, liver, and kidneys. But this is not a bad thing, nor is it permanent. It's exactly what makes methylene blue useful in functional medicine and neuroscience. It crosses the blood-brain barrier and preferentially concentrates in active tissues you know, like the ones that need the most mitochondrial support. It is not neurotoxic. It is the opposite of toxic. Many animal studies using methylene blue at therapeutic doses report neuroprotection, improved memory, and slowed neurodegeneration. I'll say this again. The dose matters here, folks. Okay, one more debunk. People comparing methylene blue to fluoride I can't even. This is just embarrassing. Comparing fluoride, a toxic halide added to drinking water, to methylene blue, a redox molecule used in medicine for over a century, is like comparing a vitamin B12 shot to battery acid. They're both synthesized, but the similarities end there. Fluoride is a byproduct of industrial waste that absolutely does accumulate in bone and destroys thyroid function. It is a documented neurotoxin. See Harvard meta-analysis here. Unlike methylene blue, fluoride offers no mitochondrial or therapeutic benefit to offset these risks. Consider this my plug for drinking only filtered water and using non-fluoridated toothpaste. Can you hurt yourself with methylene blue? Sure you could, by taking too much. Everything is a toxin at the wrong dose, even water and kale, obviously. How I use methylene blue in practice. Here's how I use methylene blue. In patients with brain fog, difficulty concentrating, or chronic fatigue, neurodegenerative concerns like early cognitive decline, post-viral syndrome, including long COVID. Combined with photobiomodulation, that's methylene blue plus infrared sauna for synergy, part of cancer adjunct protocols when appropriate. With NAD+, CoQ10, and glutathione for mitochondrial support. Safety and dosing. Therapeutic range. I was going to put this here, but this is not medical advice. This is just me talking to myself when my kids aren't home. Check with your doctor on this, but the therapeutic range in functional medicine is well, light years below what it is used for malaria, for example. Talk to your own doctor. Avoid use with SSRIs, MAOIs, or in patients at risk for serotonin syndrome. Always use USPA grade pharmaceutical quality methylene blue, not aquarium cleaner. I repeat, do not take aquarium cleaner. And as an aside, I wouldn't use the liquid stuff from Amazon, even if it is pharma grade, unless you want blue teeth.
but that's apparently how RFKJ takes his when his teeth look great. Me personally drinking it has been a fail just with my teeth. Final thoughts. Methylene blue isn't new. It isn't hype and it isn't dangerous when used appropriately. It's a powerful molecule that helps your cells breathe, think, and heal. And while Big Pharma can't patent or make any money from it, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. In fact, I strongly suspect that may be exactly why it's being trashed online. Just saying. Remember, you're not a horse, y'all. So next time someone tells you methylene blue is just snake oil, you can tell them, uh, nope, it's just mitochondrial and anti-aging support in a bottle. And my neurons are firing just fine. Thank you very much. Yours? If the fact that it is synthesized bothers you, I completely respect that. Try blue spirulina instead. But then you also need to stop eating any food that you didn't hunt or grow yourself. Unless you're one of those people. That'll do it for me. Thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the blog post version of this episode at lindgren.health. I know pushing the buttons is like one more thing, but it seriously is my only plug. Well, I guess it's my second and third and fourth after the water and the toothpaste. Until next time, stay skeptical, question everything, even me, and know that you are in charge of your own healthcare. We'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.